Welcome to Just Vintage Crochet. Today's tutorial, we will be making this 1971 learner's poncho. I believe it's called a learner's poncho because as I was thumbing through much of the pattern, it looks like we're going to be basically making a stitch sampler in the form of a poncho. So, and it's basic beginner stitches. So we're talking single crochets, half double crochets, double crochets, some granny stitches. So we're gonna be doing some fringe, a little bit of sewing. So it really is a learner's poncho and it's perfect. So here we go. This is just vintage crochet and this is 1971. The 1970s was a decade of change and turbulence, marked by a series of significant events that shaped the world we live in today. It was a time of political upheaval, social movements, cultural revolution, and technological advancement. In the United States, the 1970s were marked by the end of the Vietnam War, the Watergate scandal, and the resignation of President Richard Nixon. It was also a time of civil rights movements with the struggle for equality and justice for black Americans continuing to gain momentum. The feminist movement also gained ground during this decade with women fighting for equal rights and representation in all spheres of society. The 1970s also saw significant changes in pop culture with the rise of punk rock, hip hop and disco music, bell bottom pants and platform shoes, and television shows like Happy Days and The Brady Bunch captured the essence of the era. While movies like The Godfather and Jaws broke box office records and became cultural touchstones. NASA's Apollo missions also captured the world's attention culminating in the historic Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969. At the same time, the 1970s were a time of economic uncertainty and inflation, with many countries facing high unemployment rates and rising costs of living. This led to political and social unrest in many parts of the world as people struggled to make ends meet and demanded greater economic justice. Overall, the 1970s was a decade of change, progress, and challenges. Despite these challenges of the 1970s, the decade also saw great strides in technology and innovation, including the development of personal computers, video games, and the internet. These advancements would shape the world in the decades to come, paving the way for new forms of communication and commerce that would transform the way we live and work. So for this tutorial, I grabbed three skeins of the Walmart brand Mainstays in white. These come with 397 yards. I don't know if three is exactly needed, but I didn't feel like two would be enough. But then again, maybe it will be. I'll be able to tell you by the end of the video. And I grabbed two of the Red Heart Super Saver and what they call frosty green. To me, this looks more like a soft sage green. I know on camera it's looking quite bright and poppy, but in real life, this looks like an almost muted 1970s avocado, which is why I grabbed it. Hopefully, whenever I take my daytime uh, reveal shots, the true color will show. I grabbed this color as a nod to the 1970s. So here we go. Let's get started with the tutorial now. As far as hooks go, they call for a G6 four and a quarter millimeter hook. I found that this came up with 29.5 inches. The pattern calls for 30 and a quarter inches with 121 chains. So I didn't quite get what was needed there. I tried the 4.5 millimeter hook and that gave me 30 and a half stitches. This was the closest one. And then I tried the five millimeter hook and that gave me 31.5 inches. So obviously the best way to change the size of this, if you want it to be bigger or smaller, if you want it to be bigger, just go bigger on your hook size. If you want it to be smaller, you'll need to reduce down to a smaller yarn. And I would just use a hook size that is one one millimeter to 1.5 millimeters smaller than the recommended hook size because this pattern works up slightly firm. I have already started it, um, but genuinely and truly, you, you don't really need to watch me start that portion on camera as it's very, very simple. Even beginners are going to understand it. 
So, and I wanted to use the first few rows as sort of a gauge swatch. And it came up just right. Just, I'm, I, I, I have settled with the 4.5 millimeter hook for this pattern with this yarn to come up with the closest to the right size. So let me show you what you'll need to do to start. Your first four rows are very basic. It's just four rows of single crochet, but on your fourth row, don't complete your last stitch. Stop before you do your last stitch because we're gonna change colors. Now, it's really evident in this pattern that this is a teaching pattern because they really break down all of these stitches. They tell you to do a single crochet. They tell you step-by-step step how to do a single crochet. They tell you right here where it says fourth row, this is all teaching you how to change colors. It tells you step-by-step step how to work a half double crochet. So this really is a teaching pattern, which is fantastic. So I did already start. You will start with your accent color. They call this color one, but for simplicity, I'm going to call this the accent color, and I'm going to refer to this as the main color. Okay, so with this poncho, we do start with the accent color first, and you will work four rows of single crochet. So you're gonna start with a chain of 121, and in the second chain from the loop, from the hook, sorry, the second chain from the hook, start working your single crochet. Chain one, and start working your single crochets, leaving your last stitch unworked, as this is where we're now going to change colors. So chain your 121 chains, work your four rows of single crochet-ish, and then come on back whenever you're ready to start row five. We're ready to start row five. We're going to change colors here. So you will, that was attached to my nail, start your last single crochet, yarn over and pull through and stop when you've got the two loops on the hook. You will hold on to that, grab your new color, tension up, and complete the single crochet with your new color. There you go. Then it wants us to chain two. Typically when I work a half double crochet, I just chain one, but we're gonna follow the pattern. So chain two and yarn over and into the very first stitch, or no, it wants us to skip the first stitch, pardon me. Yes, if we look it does want us to skip the first stitch. So skipping the first stitch. So we're gonna count the chain two as our first half double crochet. And in the next stitch over, we work one half double crochet and then one in every stitch to the end. But to be honest with you, I truly and honestly can't stand this. I can't. So this is how the pattern wants us to do this. I've shown that. I am going to opt to do it my way. <laughs> Just because this is going to be my own personal garment, so this is what I want to do. Chain one, turn, and into the very first stitch right here, not skipping any stitches at all. We yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a, a loop, yarn over, and we have three loops on the hook, and you're going to just pull through all three loops. Then we just repeat, yarn over, go into the next stitch over, and work a half double crochet, pulling through all three loops at the same time. So there you go. And honestly and truthfully, in my opinion, this just makes a much better half double crochet. When you come up, that's gonna pull it up and straighten it up, and it's gonna look nice. Cause yeah, that, that chain two and using chain two as a half double crochet, mm -mm, that drives me crazy. I don't. I don't like, it makes the edge really funky. I just, I don't like it. <laughs> so let's see. We are going to work and there will be 120 half double crochets across the row. So we're gonna work one row of half double crochet. And I believe we're gonna work another row of half double crochet. So yes. So for row five and six, we are working half double crochets. Now you can choose to do it the pattern way where the next, the next round up after this, you will chain two, skip the first stitch and start working all of your half double crochets, but don't work your last stitch because we're going to change color again 
on the end of that row. So not this row, but the row after this. Okay, so work two rows of half double crochet, leaving your last stitch unworked on your second row. I'll be back whenever I am to the end of round six. Let me grab my, okay, we're on, I keep saying round, row. Boy, I confuse those, don't I? We are on row five. When I get to the end of row six, which will be our second half double crochet row, I'll be back. So I wanted to say, don't cut. Don't cut this. It does say in the pattern to cut. We don't need to. We can just pull this up. When we get back to the other end here with our second row of half double crochet, we can just pull this up and incorporate it because these edges are gonna be sewn together. So we're not gonna see the edges at all. So don't worry about edges. Just keep this, keep this tied on for now. Okay, so I have reached the end of my sixth round. Fifth and sixth row there. Now, the seventh round, we're going to work with our dark color, so our accent color. And we are going to work one row of single crochet in each stitch across. Then it says eighth through twelfth row. Repeat last row five times. So in our accent color, we're gonna work a total of six rows of single crochet. So that's what we are doing. Okay, yes, yeah, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Changing colors, and this is gonna be really easy because we already have our color attached. So we're gonna yarn over go into our last stitch. Now with the way I work my half double crochets, you'll need to roll the side towards you just a little bit so you can see right here. When you roll it towards you just a little bit, you can see that half double crochet right there. Okay. So we will yarn over go into the last stitch and pull up a loop, stop. You got three loops on your hook. Hold on to that one and pull your accent color, your darker color up. Go ahead and tension it up. Yarn over and pull through all three loops to complete your half double crochet, just like that. Now we will chain one and turn and proceed to work a total of six rows of single crochet. There we go. Let's tighten things up just a little bit. There. See, I don't look too bad. And then we're going to stitch these rows together so it really won't matter. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep my white attached for now too and see if I like working it up like this or not. If or if or if the long strand is gonna bother me. So that's just something that I will work out when we get to that point. But, okay, let's work our six rows of single crochet. Whoops. So come on back when you have completed row 12. I think we're gonna change color again. Let's just see. Okay, nope. Nope, it doesn't look like we're gonna be changing any color for the 13th row. Ah, but we are for the 14th row. So, here we go. Six rows of single crochet, I will be back. See you guys then. Just finished up my last stitch of my 12th row here. Now we are going to start the 13th row says to chain one turn, one single crochet in first single crochet. Now here is the start of the repeat. Chain two, skip next two single crochet, one single crochet in each of the next two single crochet, repeat from here, across row to three and stitches. To the last three stitches. Then we will chain two, skip two, and one single crochet in and single crochet. Yeah, so we will repeat this until there are three stitches left. And then we will chain two, skip two, work one single crochet, your last single crochet being 
the last single crochet made. And then we're going to, oh, then we're gonna change colors. So I guess don't complete your last single crochet because we are gonna change colors again. Okay, so here we go. 13, chain one and turn. Work a single crochet into the very first stitch. Then it says two, chain two, skip two, and work two single crochet. One and two. Is that correct? Into each of the next two single crochet. Then we just repeat until we have three stitches left. So we chain two, skip two, and then work two single crochet in the third and fourth stitch over. One and two. Okay. Chain two, one, two, and in the third and fourth stitch over, we work single crochet in each one. Chain two, skip two, and work two single crochet into the next two stitches. Okay guys, I'll be back whenever I have three stitches left on the end of this row. Okay, I've got one, two, three stitches left. So now we chain two, skip two, and we're gonna start our last single crochet. Go into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop and stop. A little hair. Now we change color. And obviously I did cut and weave in my ends of the white. It was, it was gonna be a lot to stretch up there. So there we go. And I split my yarn. There we go. Now let's see what we do first. I'm gonna at least chain one to lock it in. Now we have changed colors. Row 14, here we go. With second color or main color, chain one and turn one single crochet into the first single crochet, two single crochet into the next chain two space. Chain two, skip the next two single crochet and repeat from here across row. End with two single crochet in last chain two space and one single crochet in end single crochet, changing back again to our accent color. Break off main color. A lot of color change. That's okay, that's fun. Okay, so it said to work in the first single crochet. I love how I forget already. <laughs> chain one turn, single crochet in the first. Two single crochet in the next chain two space. Okay, so now we are working single crochets in the spaces, but we're hopping over the actual two single crochets. So we work one and two. Now we're gonna chain two and skip over the two single crochet and work two single crochet into the chain two spaces from the previous row. Just like that. Two, hop over these two single crochet and work two into our chain two space. One and two, let's see. How's that looking on the other side? Is that gonna buckle me a little? No, that seems to be okay. I was gonna say, if yours starts to buckle on you, loosen up your chain twos. Like, I'll go ahead and just work some loose chain twos, and that'll keep your row straight and keep it from buckling in like that. So you just draw up a little bit when you make your, well, don't split your yarn, but draw up a little bit whenever you make your chains. Then work your single crochets. And that'll help if you're, if 
this row begins to buckle on you. There you go, see? Now you got a little more bounce and a little more give. Okay, chain two, skip two, and work two single crochet into the chain two space. Very simple. I think after working the gown and the uh, baby bonnet, which was a lot of fun to work on, and just some of the other things we've been doing and some of the behind the scenes stuff I've been doing, you know, trying to figure up that Japanese pattern, I needed this. I needed something that was thicker yarn, a little bit more straightforward, and also something I can wear. <laughs> there we go. One and two. Skip over the two double single crochet and work two single crochet. Okay, guys, so this is our repeat, as you can see. There we go, that's our repeat. I will meet back up with you guys when we get down toward the end. I'll jump on before we actually get all the way to the end. Oh, did I bump that up? Yes, I did. Okay, see you then. Okay, just coming up to the end of my 14th row. Now we're gonna start row 15, but we're gonna change colors first. So we go into our last single crochet. If there's always a doggy here and we pull up a loop. Now we have two on the hook and we just change colors. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump you. There we go. There we go. Chain one. Now it says we will, with first color or with accent color, Chain one and turn, one single crochet in first single crochet. Chain two, skip the next two single crochet, two single crochet in the next chain two space and repeat. So basically the row we just worked, we're going to work again, but in this color. What an interesting pattern, isn't it? Okay. And I'm going to hang on to this white because I don't know how soon they're going to have this change color or if I'm going to be able to change color on this side soon enough to just be able to pull up on it. So I'm just going to hold on to that for now. We work our first single crochet. Tighten everything up. Then we chain two. Skip these two single crochet and in the next chain two space. Let me make these chain two a little looser. There we go. And we work two single crochet into the chain two space from the previous row. Chain two, skip two, work two single crochet. Really a quite a fun stitch pattern. I like when stitch patterns aren't just all the same thing. Um, well, I mean, I don't care if they are all the same thing, but this is nice because it keeps me, it keeps it interesting to change it up this often. It really does keep it more interesting, a little more engaging. Okay, here we go. I will meet back up with you guys when we get to the end of this row. That's neat looking. Yeah, that is pretty neat looking. Okay. Okay, just coming up on the end of the row here. And it is saying that we will Work our last two single crochet into the last chain two space, which is right here. That's been done. Chain two, skip the next two single crochet and work one single crochet in the last stitch. So skip, skip, and one single crochet into the last stitch. There we go. Now onto row 16. There we go. And row 16, we chain one turn, one single crochet in the first single crochet, two single crochet into the next chain two space. So we're gonna repeat the last row again. And we are not changing colors. 
It doesn't look like we are changing colors. Okay, so 16th row, we repeat the 15th row. And we're gonna end it the exact same way. Two single crochet in the last chain two space, one single crochet in the end. Oh no, no, this one is gonna end with where it looks like we have three single crochet in a row at the end, okay. Oh, 17th row looks quick. 17th row, we're gonna repeat the seventh row. Oh, and the seventh row is with first color, so our accent color. We're gonna work one single crochet in every stitch across, 100 and single, 120 single crochet in the row. So my guess is we're gonna work, of course, after this row, so let me not get ahead. Okay, 16th row, chain one, Work one single crochet, and that's what happens when I read ahead. Chain one, single crochet, two single crochet in the next chain two space. Right, so this is the one, this is the row where it looks like we have three double, or three single crochet in a row. Yeah. Then we get this out of my way. <laughs> chain two. Always a hair, isn't there? <laughs> And we work two single crochet into the chain two space. Work chain two, two single crochet. Chain two, skip two, two single crochet. And I think I am gonna cut my white because it looks like it might be another minute Another couple of rows or, or whatever, I'm not sure, until we change color again. So I will go ahead and weave these in off camera. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, moving right along. Chain two. Skip two, work two single crochet. I will be back at the end of this row. And it looks like after this row, we're gonna work one row of single crochet. Okay, I'm gonna weave in these ends and I'll be back. Okay, so just worked my last single crochet on the 16th row. Now the 17th row, we read ahead and we saw that that is a row of single crochet and we're not changing color, so we will chain one and turn and work a single crochet in the very first stitch in the next two stitches. Then work two single crochet into each of the chain two spaces. I'm sorry, into every chain two space. <laughs> Forgive me. One single crochet into every single crochet and two single crochet into every chain two space. Did I hit 17? I did. Okay, so this will be a fairly quick and easy row. I will catch back up with you at the other end. See you then. Okay, just finished my 17th round. Now we are on round <laughs> row. Now we're on row 18. Let's see what we got to do here. Now it says here that we will chain four, skip first stitch, one treble in next stitch as follows. Yarn over hook twice. So this is a US treble crochet. Uh, let's see here, three times to complete it. One treble in the next 117 stitches. Change color in the last treble. And then it tells you how to change your color when working with a treble, which it's truly no different than any other stitch. Then we work on to the 19th. Oh, we're gonna change colors, right, okay. So it says to chain four, of course, I think I'm gonna show you an alternative way, but first we will go with the way the pattern is requiring. Two, three, four. Then it says we skip the first stitch, which we would because the chain four acts as our first treble. So we'll skip this and then we work a treble into the next stitch. And then another one into the next stitch all the way to the end. But as you can see, this leaves quite an unsightly gap. So we're going to do this a little bit different if you wish. Let me just show you. 
pull up on your loop ever so slightly, then turn. And we're gonna work a stacked single crochet, but we're gonna work three single crochets. So you will go into your very first stitch without chaining one, pull up a loop and work a single crochet. Now, you see here that we have our single crochet like normal. Here is the top of the stitch right here. And here is the top side of the stitch. So when working a stack single crochet, you're gonna ignore this first loop and in the forward loop, just in front of it is where we're gonna work. Go into that loop and work a single crochet and then do that one more time. Go into that forward loop right there and work a single crochet. Now, there is your alternate treble Yarn over twice and into the next stitch over. You work your normal treble crochet and you just keep working them. We'll get a few worked here and then we'll look at what we have just made. There we go. And that is better looking in my opinion than the chain. And when we come back, you will simply work into the top of the stitch like normal. It'll pull it up a little bit and straighten it up and it gives us a nice clean edge to work in. And when we go back and work in this edge, now I'm not sure if this edge is gonna be one that's gonna be sewn to the other side or if this is gonna be an edge that gets fringe. I'm not exactly sure, but whatever it is, it's got some much firmer stitches that we can work into now. Okay, let's carry on. We're gonna work one treble crochet into every stitch all the way to the end. There we go. Did I click 18? I did, okay. Yeah, this really is just sort of a stitch sampler, isn't it? I really, really am enjoying this pattern a lot. Yeah, look at that, keeping us straight pull that out a little bit. So now we're straight. We have a nice clean line without a, a big chain over here with a big gap off to the side like that. We don't have that. No. Very nice. Okay guys, it's up to you if you want to do the chain four, if you want to do the stacked single crochet. I will meet back up with you at the other end of this row. Okay. Just coming up to the end of row 18, gonna work my last treble crochet, but we're gonna change colors. So yarn over twice, pull through two, pull through two and stop. We have two loops on our hook. Let's go ahead and complete this treble. There we go, with our main color. I know right now it looks like it looks like the green I'm using is the main color, but from what I saw in the photo, white is going to wind up being our main color. Okay. Let's tighten that up a little bit. And then we chain one to lock it in, and let's see what do we do next. Now we are going to start the 19th row and with second color or what I'm calling main color chain three and turn one double crochet in the first stitch and then it teaches you how to do a double crochet then one double crochet in each of the next two stitches so we're, go we're gonna start off with three double crochet in a row chain three Skip next three stitches, one double crochet in each of the next four stitches. Repeat from here. So repeat that all the way to the end where we chain three and work four in the next four stitches. Okay, repeat from across row to six end stitches. So stop when we get to the last six stitches and then end with chain three skip three stitches, one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. 
one double crochet in the top of the turning chain four, except for we don't have a turning chain four, we have our stack double crochet if that was the uh, way you chose to go with that. So I'm not going to start with a, I mean, I will start with a chain three. I'll work the row to start off with as described, but then I'm going to work my stacked single crochets. So it wants us to chain three. Sounds like our chain three is working as a builder though, rather than as a double crochet. Cause they say in the very first stitch, they don't say to skip a stitch. They say in the very first stitch, to work your double crochet. So this is more or less a builder here. And then work one double crochet in each of the next two so that we have three at the jump. Obviously, I, I am not going to, to stick with this. I'm gonna work the stacked single crochet. So without chaining pull up on the loop just a little bit just a very little bit go into that first stitch work a single crochet and then into this forward loop here we work another single crochet there we go i always roll them <laughs> just to make them a little thinner <laughs> i don't know why Okay, there we go. Then we just start working our double crochets. There we go, that's three double crochet. Then it said to chain three. We skip three stitches and in the fourth one over, we work a double crochet. And I saw that. Well, I guess it went away, it was a little hair. We just work one double crochet, right? No, we do not. That is not right. We work one double crochet in each of the next four stitches. Why did I think, for a second there, I thought we just worked one. Yeah. There we go. Then we chain three, skip three, one, two, three, and in the fourth, we work our first of four double crochet into the next four stitches across. So that's one, two, three, and four. And one more time, we chain three, skip three, one, two, three, and in the fourth stitch over, we work one double crochet and into the next three stitches after for a total of four in a row. Two, three, and four, and then we just repeat this. Okay, I will meet back up with you guys when we get down to the other end. Let's pull this down here a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my green and weave in my ends off camera. Okay. I will be back when we get down to the other end and we have six stitches left unworked. Okay guys, be right back. Okay, just coming up to the end of row 19, I have six stitches left. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So it says to chain three, one, two, three, skip three, one, two, three, and basically work three double crochet. One, two, and three. There we go. Now let's start row 20. Chain five and turn. Skip the next three double crochet group. Four double crochet in the next chain three space. Chain three, skip the next four double crochet group and repeat. A cross row ending with four double crochet in last chain three space. 
chain two, skip next two double crochet, and one double crochet in the top of the turning chain. But, you know, I don't have a turning chain as I did a stacked single crochet. So we chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's turn. And <clears throat> skip the first three double crochet and work four double crochet into this chain three space. One, two, three, and four. Then we chain three, skip the four double crochet, and repeat. One, two, three, and four double crochet into the next chain three space. So we will work this all the way to the end. Just keep repeating this. I will catch up with you at the end of this row. Okay, just reached the end here, and it says to, we worked our last three double crochet in the chain three space, then we chain two, sorry, then we chain two, skip the next two double crochet, and one double crochet in the top of our last stitch. So we will chain two, almost yarned over twice, skip two, and work one double crochet here on the end. There we go. Now, we turn the page. Here you will get to see a little illustration of the pattern that we're working on and a diagram of how we're going to assemble it. But this is what we are working on here. Now, row 21, and we will chain three, turn two double crochet into the next space. Skip the next four double crochet group and work, oh, chain three, skip the next four double crochet group and work four double crochet into the next space. Basically, we're gonna be working this right here. So, across the row, ending with a chain three and three double crochet in the end space. Okay. So as you might gather, I'm not going to start with a chain three. I'm going to start with a stacked double crochet or single crochet, sorry. There we go. Then we work two double crochet here for a total of three on the end. Then we will chain three and proceed to do what we just did in the previous row. With our four double crochet, chain three, four double crochet, skipping over the four double crochet. Here we go, one, two, three, and four double crochet. Okay guys, I'll be back uh, when we get to the end. When we do get to the end, it says to work three double crochet here on the end. So we're gonna work our last four, chain three, and work three double crochet here on the end. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to work two into the chain space. <clears throat> then I'm gonna count three stitches up and I'm gonna work my third one into the actual chain just to kind of help keep things square and straight. I'll see you when we get down to the end of this row here. Okay, just coming up to the end of our 21st row here, I've already worked my chain three, so how I'm gonna end this is two double crochet around that chain space, and then one double crochet, one, two, three, into that third chain. And that will just help keep it kind of square. Now, let's look and see what we do next. 22nd through 29th row, repeat 20th and 21st rows four more times. Now, I did already read this, and I translate that into 
repeating them four more times each. So another eight rows. Changing yarn to first color, or what I'm calling the accent color, in the last double crochet, and then remove your main color. Okay, so we're just going to repeat, and then when we look over here, we can see not counting the first row. This is row 19. This is row 20 and 21 that we are repeating four more times. So we're going to want a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 of these. So once you have 10 of these, you know you're good to go. You could say 11 if you want to count this very first row down here that we did, which would be this row. So really, truly, if you wanted to, you could say once you have a total of 11. But not counting the first row, it is 10. So we have eight and we're going to work, or we have eight, we have two, and we're gonna work eight more rows, which will make 10. Okay, so now we are at this point here where we have three double crochet on the end, and you can see we're also gonna have rows where we have no double crochet on the end. But when we have the three double crochet, when our row ends with the three double crochet in the end, that's your key to know the next row starts with the chain five, and we're gonna skip these three double crochet. Just like we did down here in the first one. And we immediately jump over to this chain three space and start working our four doubles. And uh, when we're done with this row, we will start off with the, what, you know, I like to work the stacked single crochet. You can start off with your chain but you will start off with your chain or your stacked single crochet into your first stitch and then into the chain space, you're gonna work two double crochet, then you're gonna chain three and skip and start working your pattern repeat again. So that's how you're gonna alternate the rows and this is row 22. So I will be back when we hit row 29, which means we will have a total of 10 of these rows but a grand total of 11 if you want to count this very first row here. I'll be back whenever I get to that point. My guess is that's whenever we begin repeating all of this all over again, just in opposite order. Sounds pretty easy, and I don't mind easy right now. I genuinely don't. Okay guys, I'll see you when I get to row 29. Just wanted to pop on real quick to show you how we end this row, and then you can carry on from there. If you hear any background noise, that's just my dishwasher going. So at the end of this row here, you're going to chain two and work a double crochet into your last stitch. There we go. And then just for real quick, just to start the next row, you're either going to chain three or you're going to work the stacked single crochet. So you will work your stacked single crochet or your chain three. I guess I just said that, didn't I? And then into the chain two space, you will work two more double crochet. Then you will chain three and work four double crochet into the next chain three space. Okay, I will see you at row 28 nine there we go okay so just coming up to the end of my last row of the granny stitches is what i'm calling them let me count out my rows for you here so not counting this very very first row up here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and then of course eleven if you count row nineteen now we're going to change colors so i haven't worked my last stitch yet so into that top of that chain three. I'll start my double crochet but finish it with my new color, with my accent color. And it looks like we're going to mirror just about everything we did down here with one exception and I'll show you that in just a moment. So actually I know we're going to work trebles 
So I'm not going to chain one because I'm going to work the stacked singles. So for the 30th row with first color or accent color, chain four, turn, skip first double crochet, and one treble in each of the next three double crochet, three trebles in every chain space, in the next space, one treble in each of the next four double crochets, repeat across. So just like what we did right down into here where we worked all of the trebles, we're gonna do that again. The difference being uh, we are gonna work one treble into the top of every double crochet, but we're gonna work three into every chain. So starting with my stacked singles, I'm gonna draw up on my loop just a little bit just to give me a little bit of slack. Work my first single crochet right here in the very first stitch, then into that forward loop right here. We work our second single crochet, and again into this forward loop right here, we work our third. There we go. Then we will work yarn over twice, and we'll work one treble crochet into the top of every double, and three treble crochets into every chain three space. <clears throat> That's one, two, oh, come on you, and three, and then again, one treble into the top of every double crochet across. Okay, very, very easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this with you. Now, in the description and in the pinned comment, you will find a link to the pattern. So if you want to work along with the pattern, that'll be great. But uh, for those who don't want to get the pattern, I'm gonna go ahead and work this with you all the way to the end. So it looks like we are mirroring what we did down here, but with one exception. We started this whole poncho with just four rows of single crochet. Then we did two rows of half double, then we did six rows of single. It looks like when we're done with the two rows of half double, that's where we call it quits. I don't think we're gonna end with four rows of single. and. If you look down here, make a second section of poncho in same manner. So keep in mind, you do need to make two of these because they're going to be sewn together like this. And I'll show you how to do that. I've actually done this before, but it was for a bag. But it's the same concept. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and work this with you just because if I said go ahead and rewind and check all the rows, it could get a little murky and confusing. At, at least it would be for me, so I probably shouldn't assume that about you guys, but, you know, do unto others, right? So I would want someone to work this through with me at least. So that's what I'm going to do. So we're starting with row 30 with all of our treble crochets, three into every chain three space and one into the top of every double. Then come on back and we will work on rows 31 and 32. In fact, I may be able to just move you on without. Okay. So actually, why don't we do this? Because this is going to be really easy. It says... It says here for rows 31 and 32, repeat row seven. Well, that was just two rows of single crochet. So why don't we do this? Let's work our treble crochet row and then two rows of single crochet immediately following. So row counts are gonna be, we're on row 30 now. Then row 31 and 32 are gonna be single crochet rows. Come back at the end of row 32. So that's really, really easy. Then we'll work the other stuff together. These rows here, we'll work those together, okay? I will see you at the end of row 32. Again, 30 is our treble crochet row, 31 is our single crochet row, and 32 is our single crochet row. I'll see you guys then. Okay, just finished my 32nd row, and there we go. Now we're gonna start row 32, 33. <laughs> Golly, okay. So 33rd through 36th row, repeat. 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th rows. Now, I believe that is where we were working these right here. You know, 
So let's just confirm. Okay. 13, chain one turn, one single crochet in the first single crochet, chain two, skip two, and one single crochet in each of the next two single crochet. Repeat across until there's three stitches left at the end. Right, I know we have a color change. Yes, so we are going to have a color change says with second color oh okay we're going to change colors at the end of the 13th row so 14th row is going to be this little white row this little white one here and then we're going to change colors again and work 15th and 16th row in the darker color so let's just start with row 13 Row 13, and it's row 33, so that's helpful. So 13 and 33, that's helpful. Okay, so we will chain one and turn. Single crochet into the first single crochet. And then we chain two, skip two, then work two single crochet into the next two single crochet. So we chain two skip two, one, two, and then work two single crochet. I remember these are the rows where I would count in my head like this. Chain two, so it was two, skip two, so it was two, so two, two, and then two. One, two. Chain two, skip two, work two. Single crochet, that is. Chain two, skip two, and work two. Kind of creates a little cadence in my head. There we go. I think I'm gonna go back and redo these because I remember when we did these before, I was making my chain twos a little looser because it was trying to buckle on me just a little bit. So let me do that again. Looser, you can see how loose they are now. Skip two and work two. Of course, when I say work two, I mean two single crochet. Chain two, nice and loose. Skip two, work two. Okay, guys, I'll be back at the end of this row. I think we're gonna change colors. That is what we saw. Yes, changing to second color or what I'm calling main color. So we're gonna change color at the end of this row. I will see you guys then. Okay, just finishing up this first row of these like the chain two space row. Got three stitches left, so we chain two. Now we will be changing colors here at this point. So let me get my new color ready to go. And we will start our last single crochet, pull through, hold on to that, and change our color. And I have been weaving in all my ends as I go. So now, just like we did down here, we're going to chain one and turn. Work one single crochet into the first single crochet. And work one single crochet into the chain two, I'm sorry, two single crochets into the chain two space. Then we will chain two, skip the two single crochet and start working in the chain two spaces. Two single crochet into every chain two space separated by a chain two. Just like we did down in the beginning. There we go. Chain two, skip two, and work two. And we're gonna change color again at the end of this row. So I will go ahead and cut and weave in my ends off camera. 
There we go, and have that ready to go by the end of this row. So be ready to change color by the end of the row, and there we go, we're on, we are on row 34. I believe we are on row 34. Yes, 32nd, 34, yeah, we're on row 34 now. Okay, guys, I will meet back up with you when we get to the end of this row here. Okay, just finishing up this row here, and after working your last chain two, you work two single crochet into your last chain two space. Then you will work one single crochet here on the end. Oh, my end looks a little funny. Why does my end look so funny? Well, that really dips down in there, doesn't it? Hmm. Oh well, okay. Here's where we're gonna change color. So you'll pull the yarn through, hold it aside, and then add your accent color. And there we go. And I'm gonna chain one, and let's see. It wants us to work 13. 14 and 15. So with 15, of course, we've changed color again. With 15, we chain one turn, one single crochet into the first single crochet, chain two, skip two. So we're going to do this green row down here again. Okay, so let's work our first single crochet right here on the end. Tighten these up just a little bit. Then we will chain two, skip the two single crochet right there at the start, and work two single crochet into every chain two space. Chain two, skip two, work two single crochet into every chain two space. There we go. I need to make those just a little looser again. Well, I think these ones were fine. Yeah, screw it. I'll make these. Just do it again. <laughs> there we go. And then chain two. There we go. Okay, guys, I will meet back up with you when we get down to the end of this row. And we are ready for row 16. And then after row 16, we will move on to 30, 37th through 40th row. Okay. There we go. I'll be back. Okay, just coming up to the end here, I've got my last two chains worked. We're gonna skip these two single crochet and work one single crochet on the end. Then we will chain one and turn, and we're going to repeat row 16. And row 16 is just more of the same. So we work one single crochet to start in the very first single crochet, two single crochet into the chain two space, one single, nope. Then we chain two, skip over the two single crochet and work two single crochet into the next chain two space. All the way to the end, this will be our repeat. I will catch back up with you when we get down to the other end. There we go. Okay guys, see you there. Okay, just worked my last two double cro two single crochet into the chain two space and one single crochet into the last stitch. Now we are ready for the 37th row. And 37 through 40 repeats uh, row seven four times. Okay, and so what is row seven again? I think that's single crochet. One single crochet in each stitch across. Okay, so we are going to work four rows of single crochet and since we've got some chain twos to contend with, 
we're going to work one single crochet into the top of every single crochet that we see and two single crochet into every chain two space. Just like that. So work one single crochet over the single crochets and two single crochet into the chain two spaces. And after this, work three more rows of single crochet. I will be back when I get to row 40. That's four total rows of single crochet. This one here counts as row one. Okay, just got to the end of row 40. Now for 41. And we are working 41, 42, and 43. So 41st through 43rd row, repeat rows four, five, and six. And four is a, oh, change color. Okay, so number four is another single crochet row, but we're gonna change color at the end of row four. And we're gonna work two rows of half double crochet. So we're almost done with this first panel, then we have to make another one. So let's work one more row of single crochet, then two rows of half double crochet, and then we can work the last row together. There we go. So a row of singles ending with a color change, then two rows of doubles. Then we will only have one row left. Okay, so there you go. I will be back when I get to the end of the two double, half double crochet rows. If I said double crochet, I did not mean to. So just to reiterate, we have one row of single crochet, then we change color at the end of this row, and we work two rows of half double crochet in the white. Okay, I will be back at the end of the two rows of half double crochet. For my half double crochet row, and I just wanted to jump on here and show you one more time how I like to do my half double crochets. Reminder that they want you to start off with a chain two and count that as your first half double crochet. Then skip the very, very first stitch right here and start working into the next. But I just chain one and yarn over and work my half double crochet into the very first stitch. And I'll repeat that on the other side for my next row up. So I just wanted to jump on here as a quick reminder of that. That way you didn't have to rewind the video all the way back to see how that was done if you were still curious. Okay. I'll be back after two half double crochet rows. And I can say, while well, I have you on here. Yeah, I definitely think, let's see if I can pan out. Okay, I can just a little bit. So this is what I have left over. Um, I could probably make the other poncho or the other half of the poncho with this amount, but I am glad that I have three balls of this. Two would be more than enough. Two will be more than enough. And here's what I have left over of the green. So mind you, the Walmart brand has a lot more yardage than the Red Heart Super Saver. So two balls if you're going to go with red heart super saver definitely two of these of your accent color is needed and i would comfortably say two of this two of the main color is needed as well especially if you want to go bigger so that covers exactly how much yarn you need and of course i'm going to leave all of these details in writing down in the description box below what is going on here? There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna cut the green off. I'm weaving these ends off camera. But I don't think we're gonna use any more green until we start the other half of the poncho. So let's see, let me pan out here a little bit and we can get a pretty good look. That's as far as I can pan. This is how it's turning out. I am super pleased with the color, the color choice, by the way. So super pleased. So here is how it's turning out so far. Very, very nice. This is gonna look great with fringe. And I think the fringe I'm gonna, color I'm gonna use is just this dark one. 
I want to keep the white pretty exclusive to these features in the pattern. So I am going to use the green for the fringe. And I think that's going to look real nice. Okay, guys, I will be back at the end of my second half double crochet row. Okay, just finished my two rows of half double crochet. Now let's see what do we do next. So the 44th row, the last row, we're going to chain one turn and work a slip stitch. And here it just gives you instructions on how to work a slip stitch. One slip stitch in each stitch across. This will be the top edge of poncho and will complete first section. Make a second section of poncho in same manner. Okay, so we're going to work one row of slip stitches. I would work them kind of loose, you know, not super loose, but not super tight either. So right into our first stitch here, we'll just work a slip stitch. And there we go, working some slip stitches. So this is gonna clean up our neck edge and finish off our first section of our poncho. Then we need to do this all over again. So come on back once you've made your second poncho section, basically making a whole nother one of these. And then we will assemble it together, which is very, very easy actually. There we go, and you can see I'm just doing these kind of loose. They still have a little bit of stretch and give to them. Okay guys, I'm gonna make one more of these whole deals here, and then uh, I'll be back, and we can piece this thing together. See you in a bit. Okay, so when you are ready to sew it together, this is how it needs to look. You need to make sure that the white edges are on top because that is the neckline. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is fold this part in and come over here and fold this part in. And as you can see, it's already starting to take shape. So I'm gonna turn you off for just a moment so I can flip it over. Okay, now with it flipped over, you can see we have one side that is definitely longer than the other. As you can see, yes, I'm in my watermelon pajamas. Okay, so we pull the short side down and then the long side, and we're going to attach the short side to the long side, okay? And that's gonna create the V-neck on this side. So go ahead and Attach these two together, attach the front together, pin them. You can sew one time, one side at a time, but this is how it goes together. So just, just to remind you, once you have it, here we go. Once you have it initially pinned, you're gonna notice that you have one side that's short and one side that's appearing to be much longer. The short side is gonna attach to the side the neck side of the long side. So one more time, we bring the long side in all the way, all the way down, just like this. Then you will bring the short side and attach it to the long side, just like that. There you go. Now you can see it better. Okay, so I'm gonna turn, turn you off and straighten it up real quick and bring you back. Okay, here it is all folded together. Again, that's the long side. Bring it all the way to the other edge where the short side is, and then bring your short side all the way over and attach it to the long side. And it will look just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew these together on both sides, and then I'm gonna throw it in the wash to kind of help uh, loosen up these tight stitches and stuff. Then we're going to go ahead and put the fringe on. Okay, it's been washed and dried. And honestly, that Walmart yarn, that $3 yarn, look how well it holds up after being washed and dried. Isn't that great? It's in great shape. Okay, it's quite a bit softer too. I, didn't, I don't use fabric softener. I use vinegar for fabric softener. And it really, really does the job. So... <clears throat> and if you're curious, um, 
I just put the vinegar into the fabric softener drawer of the of the washing machine. That's all I do. Okay, it's white distilled vinegar. All right, let's get on to fringe. Now, the pattern says to work up uh, six to seven inch long fringe. I'm lucky I don't have to worry about cutting up a cardboard. I've got my Mayflower book. And you guys have seen this before. Whenever I come up about halfway up the back of the book right here, because that's about where I'm going to cut, and come right here, it's almost six and a half inches. It comes to, like, here's six and a half inches right here. It comes up to about right there. So that's close enough for me. So I think what I'm going to do, I don't, I still, I've been thinking and thinking and thinking about, do I want to do just white fringe or this darker fringe? I don't know yet. I'm going to play with it. So what I'm going to do to start is just start wrapping some fringe. So I take the book, I open the cover, I put a little tail in there, and I just start wrapping just like this. So I'll do this a little bit with the green and a little bit with the white, and I will work a few pieces out and see how I like it being just green, then see how I like it being just white, then see how I like it maybe being blended with both, you know, kind of salt and pepper in it. So I want to be able to get, I think I'm going to do four pieces. So I might, I don't know. See, this is the part where I just don't know. This is where we get to add our own flavor. What do we want to do? I think that's going to be enough for now. Then I'll do some in white. There we go. And then this piece stuck in the book, well, you can just cut that to length. So. You'll just match that up with one of these other pieces here. And you see how much you have left over on the end. And you just cut that. So that'll be fine. There we go. So I've got some green fringe cut. I'll do a little bit of the white. And then we'll see. We'll see. It kind of looks to me like, where is the pattern? It almost looks to me like they have it salt and peppered. Like they've got red and black mixed. So I don't know. I don't know what I want to do yet. Like I don't think you have to follow exactly what the pattern says when it comes to details like this because it's your own personal garment. So you make it, you know, it's handmade. That gives you the freedom to make it look exactly how you want. Don't have to always follow exactly how the picture looks, you know. We could just do whatever we want. Here we go wrap up a few of these I'll be back all right let's see where is my hook here it is okay grab one from here well actually let me grab two from here let's start with just the green so fold these in half I'm just going to grab any old random spot because this is just testing right now. So I'm not going to worry about being super precise. Let's do a few of the green in a row and see how that looks. There we go. And I think I want to do every other one. I don't want to crowd the bottom too much or else it won't it won't have good movement. It'll be too stiff. Kind of like that with the green. Now let's do a couple with just the white. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna put a couple of the white on here. All right, so here we go. I did some salt and pepper, just the white and just the green. So what do we think? What do you guys think? Gosh, I don't know. I like all three of them. <laughs> I really, truly like all three. Um, the salt and pepper is very fun and interesting, isn't it? Then let me stand up and see what it looks like from a distance. Let me see. 
I can't, oh, I can't hardly decide. I can't decide. Well, I think you can't go wrong with all three. Now, do I want to do salt and pepper, white or green? I don't know. I like all three. I suppose you could always just change them out, but gosh, that's a lot of work. Um, okay, I'll be right back. I'm still going to decide. Hang on. Okay, so I literally went and put an outfit on. <laughs> I put some blue jeans on <coughs> and a little white tank top. And as far as the way it looks with an outfit with like the blue jeans and stuff, I think I'm going to go with the solid green. I hope that doesn't disappoint anybody who was hoping for either of these two because they all three look good. That's why I just had such an internal struggle there with which one do I go with. But as far as an outfit put together, this really, the solid green added to the poncho with my outfit. It made the poncho appear to be longer by extension. So that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. I already showed you how to make the fringe and all that. So all that's left now is for you guys to enjoy the reveal. I'm gonna try it on the mannequin so that you can see how it looks on the mannequin with her small frame and how it looks on me. I wear a size large, extra large, if a particular brand feels like being mean. Um, I am five foot five. I guess I'm about, a hundred, I'm really just laying out all my statistics here, about 160 pounds, but I'm telling you this to see if, you know, not to see if, but so that you can see if you relate. <clears throat> so those are my statistics and you'll be able to see what it looks like on me and on the mannequin. Okay, I will be back whenever I'm ready to show you guys how this looks paired up with an outfit. Okay, here it is on the mannequin. She's a lot smaller than me. She is wearing shorts, but this naughty girl is not wearing a shirt, but Look how cute and summery that looks. See, shawls aren't just for the winter or the fall. This is absolutely a summer look. She's ready, but yeah, it fits her perfectly. She's about a size six. Can get away with a size eight, but she's about a size six US. So there she is. That's how it fits her. And it fits me just about the same, except for it's a little shorter on me. So there you go. I'll just slow down how much I'm moving here. Okay, now you're about to see how it looks on me as I take my dog for his little morning walk. Okay. Okay guys, well thank you so much for watching and I had a lot of fun working with this learner's pattern. I'm actually on the hunt for more. So look out for my next video. My next video is gonna be something different, something quite unique. I think you guys are really gonna get a kick out of it. All right, I will see you guys then. Love you lots, bye.